It's tropical storm season here in South Florida, which means amphibians are gonna be on the move. And this gives me the chance to find a whole stack of invasive amphibians right here in the middle of Miami, including one of the most destructive invasive species in the world. Shout out, paint over. Yes! Woohoo! Look at that thing! Being as we're on the lookout for invasive frogs, looking around urban city areas is a really good way to find them. With lots of lights and tropical gardens everywhere, it's an absolute paradise for non-native species. Now looking along the sides of well-lit buildings is a pretty good way to find tree frogs typically. You're gonna see them around your houses and stuff, and it's because of all the little bugs. Now it is raining, so I am gonna be wanting to look around all these plants as well, because they might leave this and head into the plants as well. But it wouldn't surprise me if we saw some frogs right under these lights. Yeah. There's the first frog. Have a look at that little guy. This is another invasive species that lives out here. This is a greenhouse frog. They're kind of like a cricket frog. They're really tiny. Everything eats them. They're just a little brown frog. You can oftentimes see them hanging around buildings like this, just looking for bugs in the lights. Really cute little dude, but not the frog that we're looking for. But it is good to see that amphibians are out and about moving around. Really cool little guy. Gonna put him back and keep looking for more. There's a tree frog. That's gotta be cute when you just come in here. Yeah. Yes! Whoop! Have a look at that little guy. That is a nice sized Cuban tree frog. They're gonna be all up and around these buildings. Very dark color. They can range in colors vastly. They can be brown, they can be kind of tannish green. One of the defining factors of them is that they always typically have a little bit of yellow on their legs. They're always puffing up. Check out what he's doing. He's filling his body with air. This is something that all frogs will pretty much do, frogs and toads, to keep from being eaten. Now, as you can see, we're in the middle of a pretty urban area, but there's also a lot of these very tropical plants. And with it raining, we've actually got a tropical depression moving through. With this rain moving through, there's gonna be a lot of these guys on the move. There's gonna be a lot of these, spring peepers, narrow mouth toads, and uh, potentially even cane toads out. Now Cuban tree frogs, as their name suggests, come from a lot of the Caribbean islands and South America, kind of more in that region. And it kind of makes sense that they'd come up into the southern portion of Florida, but uh, they're a more successful species in tropical environments, especially being one of the larger tree frogs in those habitats. And another thing that these frogs have going for them is they actually have slightly more toxic skin than other frogs. So for instance, the green tree frogs here, a lot of the things that eat them would not be able to eat this. In fact, I have to wash my hands and be careful not to touch my face because after touching one of these frogs, if you touch your eyes, it is going to burn for a little while. And I am saying that from experience. It does burn for about 30 to 40 minutes. Really unpleasant experience, but it is just a slight toxin. It's nothing too bad. Just wash your eyes out. But it makes it to where a lot of species actually cannot eat this frog. Look at that little guy. Now Cuban tree frogs were actually introduced here, and they're actually being introduced to a lot of major city areas here in North America. They just started getting into Louisiana, but something really interesting is happening. See, in this part of Florida, it's very tropical, very warm, and even at night it stays pretty warm. But where I'm at, it still gets a bit cold during the wintertime. So the frogs that are living there are kind of experiencing a little bit of dwarfism. Like they're not growing to full size, their colors are off. They are Cuban tree frogs, but they're not getting as big and as healthy as the Cuban tree frogs here. So it'll be really interesting to see how high up and how far north these tree frogs can go, but typically they're gonna go pretty far. They have much bigger eyes than the tree frogs in the other areas here in North America. Now something that's really detrimental about Cuban tree frogs in their invasive range is that they eat native tree frogs. They eat green tree frogs, they eat spring peepers, they eat all those different frogs. This one, like I said, is only about half grown. They'll get about twice this size, and one about twice this size will eat a frog of this size. They will eat other Cuban tree frogs, they'll eat other native species, they will just eat anything that moves. And that's oftentimes the problem with many different invasive frogs. Look at that little guy, that is awesome. A very common species out here for sure. All right, see you little buddy, watch him go. Come on, bud. Get on your plant. Searching around buildings works, but our main target is gonna be much closer to ponds and other permanent bodies of water. So it's off into the torrential downpour. Normally this wouldn't be a problem for me, but I don't have a waterproof camera. 
which means time is gonna be limited, and I'm gonna have to track one down as fast as I can. Oh my gosh! What is that? Who is gonna Who is gonna tell me that lived here? There's like a 12 pound crab down there. Does anyone know what that was? I'll come back for that. Oh my gosh! That was insane. Shout out, Pinto. Yes. <laughs> Look at that thing. That is a trip. I did not think we were going to see one tonight with all this crazy weather going on. But have a look. That thing's the size of a bull for all. Oh my goodness. Look at his little stubby arms. This is an incredible animal. This is a cane toad. This is actually the world's largest species of toad. And you can find them right here in the middle of South Florida, right here in the middle of the cities, just in any little garden space. Now these are an invasive species. These don't, these don't actually belong here. They pretty much have no natural predators besides crows. But uh, look at that thing. It's just, it's just huge. Really strong too. If you were to feel this animal, really, really strong and rigid. Very bumpy skin. They're not slimy like a frog. Just a chunk of toad. That's hilarious. Now another defense that these toads have is they like to puff up their body really big. I don't know if he's going to do it. Let's see. Puff up. He's doing it a little bit there, but they'll just puff their body up real big to where nothing can eat them. Essentially the cane toad's entire defense strategy is that nothing can eat it. They've got those poison glands right behind the eyes. They're a really big toad. They don't taste good. And look, he's doing it right now. See, it puffed up with there, and now he's like a balloon. And then he just deflated. Just like that. Really crazy animal. And they eat virtually everything. They eat other frogs, they eat smaller toads. They're a real problem out here. Now they're typically going to be found in South America. They're actually a more tropical species. And they don't get as big in this part of Florida. They actually get really big in some of the more southern areas. And they get really big, obviously, where they're originally from in South America. But the more north you go, the smaller things get. I'd have to guess it's just because of the habitat and because they're not getting as much food, but uh, it's just something you're gonna see in areas like this. And when they're smaller, it can be very difficult to tell the difference between these guys and native species. We do have native southern toads, and this would eat a southern toad. He's, as you can see, it's a big old gnarly rainforest toad. And look at that. Just look at him there. He's a beefy boy. These are the bullfrogs of the toad world. An absolutely amazing find in the middle of a tropical depression. Really awesome toad. I don't know how much time we have with the camera and the lights, but basically what I'm going to be doing is taking this toad home. This is a really amazing animal, but they are invasive. But I'm going to be bringing this animal home with me. They're a really cool guy, and I actually want to try to keep a cane toad. So this is going to be the one that I keep. We do not have time out here. I can't even believe we got one, but this is absolutely amazing. Big old gnarly cane toad.